Little Big Planet is a game from Media Molecule for the PlayStation 3 with a focus on playing, creating, and sharing. Hello, I'm Glitchmaster7, and welcome to the Cut Content Of, a show where we try to find content that you aren't able to see in some amazing games. This game is fondly remembered by kids of the late 2000s, released on the 27th of October 2008. One of the first ever builds of Little Big Planet is a game designed by David Smith featuring a character called Mr. Yellowhead. Most people call this demo Craft World, but when pitched to Phil Harrison, it was known as Brain Fluff and ran on Windows with a DualShock 3 for moving and a mouse for creating. No buttons were used to control Mr. Yellowhead, only the joysticks. Even though the level file format has been revised over a thousand times, technical director Alex Evans said in a live stream, in theory, you could take this level, somehow get it on the network, and in theory, LBP3 would be able to load this exact scene. There were three basic modes for creation in Brain Fluff. Scribble mode, where the mouse was used for drawing an object, like the lasso tool in Photoshop. Polygon mode, where an object will be resized, rotated, or moved. And Vertex mode, which is almost exactly the same as the corner editor in the final game. Jam, Sax, and Bonsai, among others, were some of the names for LBP, which were suggested by a naming company. Media Molecule were going to call the game Little Big Land, but creative director Mark Healy didn't like it and threatened to quit over it. Executive producer Pete Smith suggested Little Big World, but they couldn't use the name for some reason. The team thought of Little Big Planet and didn't like it at first. When Edge Magazine wanted to put the game on their front cover in April 2007, the studio still hadn't decided on a name. Little Big Bang was the name given to Edge, and the only part of the name shown was Bang, the cut part. The fact that the game originally ran on Windows could possibly explain the sprite sheet for some debug icons, containing some icons from Windows XP, the OS used to develop the game. Other unused graphics contained in the files include a sprite sheet with lots of hand-drawn icons and a person's face, a list of the first 16 multiples of 16, an early icon for the global lighting object, some button prompts and a controller for an early loading screen. Notice that L1 was used for jumping. Two early level badges used in the beta for the gardens levels. There's a whole bunch of uncollectible stickers. Some unused icons include an early cog, some buttons, and early poppet material icons. An early loading icon, usually accompanied in early gameplay by debug information. A logo for the pewter, an early name for the pod computer, sometimes seen in early screenshots of the pod. A satellite world map that is slightly faded. An unused reflection, possibly for an early version of the wedding. A footprint. Not much else to say about that one. An orange square saying position X. A texture relating to the knife and fork emblem of the GDC video still remains. An icon for the tutorial video board. An image for positioning HUD elements and testing screen safe areas. There's a whole sprite sheet for early poppet icons with different symbols and ball shaped icons for different materials and Arnold Schwarzenegger's face from a scene in Total Recall. This image appears in emitters when there's a missing preview icon. Before Media Molecule knew what Create Mode would be like, they didn't have the poppet, but instead some physical tools at the start of a Create level. These were three kinds of paint, a paint scraper, and the jetpack. The jetpack was the only tool to make it into the final game. There was also a hairdryer which could cut away at objects. The UI also had some changes since this prototype. This build was known on the disc as Little Big World. There are some hidden repeats of Pete and Leo's names in the introduction level, which are completely invisible in normal gameplay. Early videos show the score bubbles as sponge balls. These were originally going to be used as currency to place materials. This gameplay element was cut as it was tedious and less fun, but some code still exists for it with annotations. The only materials shown are ones from early poppet icons. Also, eggs were going to be used instead of prize bubbles, and still has a model in the game, albeit unused. This could be why the rooster sound plays when all prizes in a level are collected. Four other unused models exist which are, the walker, a radio tower grouped with pod models, probably for a planet, a spring sign with physics, and some glue which changed to just using the action button. In fact, the song playing right now, Flirty Cha Cha, was unused in Little Big Planet. Other unused songs include a song called Horny Old Man. That's this one. I'm glad that's added. I remember those songs. They were good. The Info Moon was originally called the Info Fridge, as seen in some early screenshots. A tool called the Freezatron, often known as the Ice Hazard, was cut from Little Big Planet and can be obtained in the poppet through hacking, but will not work. Ice is my favorite of all. You touch it for too long. 
you get like frozen up and you can use the six axis to just break free. This was cut as it caused issues in online gameplay. This build also contains an early version of the scoreboard display. This does have some unused sound effects to go with it. Here are some. Another tool called the Image Import Tool would allow the player to import images from the PS3 storage and place them in-game. It works completely fine when hacked into the game, but was not used in-game for fears of players importing copyrighted or vulgar content. The character in the tutorials was actually originally going to be someone other than the Queen in their kingdom in the clouds. This is suggested by some unused text. Some unused DLC includes a Bumblebee costume, an MM ribbon, likely for competitions, a clapper board and a black beret for a scrap video making contest, and some Ratchet and Clank costume sprites, which are only available in Little Big Planet 2. An unused pod theme is in the game and was reused for Little Big Planet 2. There is an unobtainable material in some of the gardens levels known by the community as dark glass. When scaled up, an unused water texture can be seen. A whole load of things from early LBP2 versions have language data in the original Little Big Planet. This could possibly mean that it was planned to be added as DLC or even just as an update to the game. There's some other unused code and text including a variable for an early version where paint would be used instead of stickers. Some benchmark test results to see which levels use the most of the PS3 resources. A string of text for the string for the info moon saying fridge string, obviously unchanged from when the info fridge was changed. Strings related to the Parappa the Rappo costume item. And finally some variables for the cut ice hazard. There are four additional cut themes called English Seaside, Russian Theater, American Midwest Train, and Japanese Window. All had their music released in DLC, specifically the first MM Music Pack and the Monster Kit. Thank you for watching, but also thank you to Glitchmaster7 for voicing this episode. Thank you for watching this episode of The Cut Content Of. You can support the show by pledging some money at patreon.com slash tcco, subscribing, sharing, turning on notifications, or just watching some of our other videos. If you'd like to, you can leave a suggestion for a future episode in the comment section below. But that's it for this episode. You can click or touch this profile icon to go to my channel, Glitchmaster7. Bye!